Hey guys, so today we're going to build a model using JavaScript and our model can be used in any project you want. So for example, I have here a website and I've just created for this tutorial. So I have here a website where I want to implement the model that we're going to create at the end of this tutorial. So I have here a button. I want when I click on this button, I want to open this inside the model. Uh, also here, when I click on this button, I want to uh, show this text here inside the model. So how we will do that, it's simple. All I need is to go and grab the files that we're going to create in this project, which are the model.js and the model.css. So I'm just gonna go and copy them to my project here. So I'm just gonna go and create a folder called model and then paste those two files there. So now I'm gonna go and open my text editor and open my project here. So I'm gonna go and open up the folder. It's in my desktop. Right now, I'm gonna go into the index.html file, and I'm gonna go at the top, the very top here before the closing head tag. I'm gonna link our model.css uh, file, and then our script, uh, which is model.js file. And now all I need to do is I'm gonna go at the bottom here and then add a script tag and call a function called model. So this is a function that was created inside our model.js. So whenever you want to create a model, you just need to call our function here. Now it's all about the arguments that it's gonna take in. So here I'm gonna go and grab those, uh, the selectors. So I'm gonna grab the ID of the class name of the button. So apply now here, this is that button. It has a class name open model two. So I'm just gonna go and select that and also select the wrapper and also the content here. So I'm gonna grab these three here and paste them as arguments to my functions. So this must be, of course, the strings. All right, so here I need to like range this. And now these must be a selector. So this is a CSS selector. So I'm gonna put here a dot because it's class name, the same thing here and the same thing here. And that's it. So now if I save and go and refresh, you can see that the candidate here is gone. And now if I click on here, or if I hover, you can see that it's clickable now. If I click on that, the model will show up and the candidate is inside. Now to close the model, uh, you just need to click outside of the content here and it's gonna be uh, closed. Now let's go and do the same thing for this one here. So I'm just gonna go here and this time I'm gonna grab this uh, selector here which is an ID for our button subscribe and, uh, and also the model one wrapper and the content for our model. And then I'm going to go and call our function again and paste in those selectors. So here it's going to be an ID. So be careful. And then here it's going to be a class name. And then again, here it's going to be a class name. So I'm going to go and save now and then refresh. You can see that this is gone. Now if I hover over this, it's clickable now and I can just click on it and the model shows up. So one thing, one last thing is you can either click outside of the content to close the model or you can just go here and say true. And if I hit save and refresh, by adding true as the fourth argument for our function model, this adds a an X button to close the model. So if I click on this, this will close the model. 
So that's it for the preview. Uh, now let's go and create the code inside our model.css and the model.js file and make it so anyone out there can use our model in their project. Well, to create a model in our HTML code, we need three elements. The button which we need to click on and open the model and then a wrapper and then uh, the content that's going to go inside our model. So that's why our function model takes in three CSS selectors. The selector for our button, open model selector. So this is a parameter, the first parameter for our model function. Then the second one is for the model wrapper selector. And then the third one is for the model content selector. Now these three here might be an ID or a class name. We don't know. That's why we need to use the query selector to select these elements. So I'm not going to use, for example, get element by ID here because that's just for selecting elements using the ID attribute. But here I'm going to use query selector and then pass in the ID or the class name I receive as arguments to my function model. So here I'm going to set this to a constant called open model button. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the wrapper element and the content element. And now that we have selected our elements, now we can style them using JavaScript, we can remove them, we can do whatever we want with them using JavaScript. And now the last thing here, the fourth argument, as we've seen before, is adding the X button to close the model. So the user might want to add this X button to close the model. In that case, he needs to pass in the fourth element set to true, which will be called close model. So if close model is set to true, we need to add this X button and make it so when we click on it, we close the model. But by default, if the user didn't mention the fourth argument, we're just going to set it by default to false. And now after I have selected all these three elements, all I need to do is to style them to look like a model. So it's simple. All I need to do is to create a model that says as file and uh, type in some CSS code there. So I'm going to like create a class name there called open model and apply some styling to it. And then uh, to start this button here, all I'm going to do is like add this class name here to this button here using JavaScript. And when I do that, if I go and hover over the button, it says span. But now because I will add this open model class name to this span here, it will give the feeling that it's clickable. Now it looks like a real button. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the wrapper. So I'm going to go and create some CSS for modal wrapper in modal.css. And then using JavaScript, I'm going to add this modal wrapper class name to the class list of this dev here. You can see here that display here is set to none, so this is hidden. Now when I click on this button, all I need to do to show the model is just change the display from none to block. So that's what I'm going to do using JavaScript. So I'm going to go and add an event listener to the open model button, which is this button here, which is what we have selected before. I'm going to add a click event and I'm going to run a function whenever we click on the button. So when I click on the button, I'm going to change the model wrapper element, which is this dev here that it's display property set to none. I'm going to change now the display property to block. So I'm going to go and say style and then the display property and then set it to block. And this will show our model. So simple. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to style this content here, the modal content. So I'm just going to go and create this styling for the modal content class name inside my model that says as file, and then add this class name here to the class list of this dev here. So now the question is, how do we add a class name using JavaScript to an element? 
It's simple, let me show you how if you never have done this before. So let's say we have a dev with the class name, wrapper, thing, button, call, etc. So if I go and select this element and then console log element dot class list, I'm gonna get this DOM token list, which is a list of my element here. What's amazing about this is we have here some methods that we can use, like the add method. The add method here, it's for adding new class names to your dev, which is exactly what we need. So if I say element.classless.add and then pass in a string, that string is gonna be the class name I want to add to the class list of my element. So for example, if I say class name, this class name will be added to my dev. So it's simple. So now inside our function model, after we have selected all our elements, all I need to do is get into their class list and then use the add method and then type in the right class name for each of these elements. For model wrapper elements gonna be model wrapper for this here is gonna be model content and for the button is gonna be open model class name. So now whenever the user calls the model function, we will style the elements he passed their selectors as arguments to our function. And now it's time to talk about closing the model. So when we pass true as the fourth argument to our function model, this means that we need to add the X button here to close the model. So in that case, what we need to do, so this is our model content, this is a more model content element here where we've selected using query selector. Now what we need to do is add uh, some HTML code to our model content element, which is just this X here. But we need to do that only if the close model is true, which means we need to use an if statement. And now all I need to do is change the inner HTML of my model content element. So I'm gonna use a plus equal sign here because I don't want to override the content here. So it's gonna be a span with the class name close model. And this here is an HTML entity, which is the multiplication sign, which is this multiplication sign here. Now we need to add an event listener to this element here. So when I click on it, I'm gonna close the model. So I'm gonna go and select this using the query selector and I'm gonna pass in the class name close model. And here you must be careful because query selector will go and return the first element that its class name is close model. So if you have like three elements with close model, query selector will always return the first one. So we must be careful not to use query selector on our document and instead use it just on the model content element. And then I'm gonna set this to close model button and add an event listener to it. And this time we need to change back the display property of our wrapper to none. And that's it. And now we need to close the model when I click here outside the content. So to achieve that, we first need to talk about the event target. So we need to add an event listener to our model wrapper element, which is this whole element here. And we are gonna add an event listener, which is a click event. Now this, the second argument here is a function and that function takes in an argument, which is the event itself, which is the click event. Now this event here is an object which has a property called target. So if I console log, for example, event.target and then open my console and for example, go and click in this area here, this is where I'm gonna get in my console. So it says that I clicked on a dev with the class name subscribe wrapper, model wrapper, and etc. So this is where I actually clicked on. This is the dev I clicked on. If I click on the H1 here, it says that I clicked on H1. If I click in this input, if I click on the button, it says I clicked on a button. If I click on the X, it's gonna say that I clicked 
and I span with the class name close model. So this means that when I click anywhere in my document, I can know exactly where I clicked using the event dot target. You may ask now, why do we need the event dot target in the first place? So why we just don't go and add an event listener to our model wrapper element? And whenever we click on that, we just go and set its display property to none. And that's the way we close the model. That may sound like it's going to work, but it's not because of something called event bubbling. So if this is the first time you hear about event bubbling, I suggest you go and learn about the DOM event phases. So what's happening here is when I go, for example, and click on a button in my web page. So this is actually the target. This is where I clicked. This doesn't stop here. And because of the event bubbling, when I click on the button, all the event handlers assigned to the ancestors of the button will be triggered. So if there is an event handler assigned to the dev, it will be triggered. Also the body, the same for the HTML and the document also. So if we add an event listener to the document and we click on the button, this won't just trigger the event listener that is added or that is assigned to the button, but also the one assigned to the document. So if I click on the button because of the event bubbling, I will see this alert or I will get this alert. And also if there is any event handler assigned to the window, it will also be triggered because of the event bubbling. So in our case, when I go and add an event listener to the model wrapper element and then close the model by setting the display property to none, what's going to happen when I click on one of these elements? So if I click, for example, on the H1 here, H1 has its ancestors, which is this model wrapper element. So if I click on the H1 here, this will trigger the event listener uh, that is assigned to this dev here, which is this event listener here. So when I click on H1, this will cause this to execute, which means closing the model. So now if I click anywhere here because of event bubbling, this will cause this event handler to be triggered and close the model. So to fix this, it's going to be simple. So before seeing the display property of our wrapper element to none, we need to check if the event.target where we actually clicked is the model wrapper element itself. So basically this means that I want to close the model only if I click on the model wrapper element and that makes actually sense. So now this is the end. It's time to open our text editors. But first, I still need to ask you to subscribe if you are not already subscribed, like the video and also comment. And I also want to thank these guys for this support. I really appreciate your support, so thank you. And now let's go to the part where we actually code our model.